Over the summer of 1887, American physicists Albert Michelson and Edward Morley performed an experiment to measure the speeds of light. That's right, speeds, with an S. They thought that space was filled with a substance called the ether, and light speed depended on ether winds. However, there was a problem. No matter in which direction they turned their fancy michelson morley interferometric setup, it would always return one and the same result. Today, the experiment is called the most famous failed experiment in history. Its result was that light apparently only ever knows one speed, 299,792 kilometers per second. That was the starting point of Einstein's theory of relativity. He would figure that if the speed of light was an absolute property of nature, then other properties, such as time, length and even mass, would have to be more relative than we thought. In order to measure Earth's distance from the Moon, scientists send out beams of light and measure the time it takes for the reflection to return. Light always takes 1.3 seconds there and 1.3 seconds back. Imagine a spaceship passing by with high speed. From the perspective of the astronaut, his ship is at rest and the Earth-Moon system is passing by. Relative to him, the beam of light will be moving in a diagonal. This diagonal is longer than the Earth-Moon distance measured at rest. If, from the astronaut's perspective, the beam of light would take the same 1.3 seconds to reach the Moon, for him, light would have to move faster. This, however, cannot be, because light only ever knows one speed. To solve this debacle, for the astronaut, it will simply take light longer to reach the moon. And, as a result, when 1.3 seconds have passed on Earth, more time than that will have passed on the moving spaceship. Time is stretched, or, as Einstein put it, moving clocks run slower. The astronaut doesn't notice any of this. To him, the clocks in a spaceship are running at normal speed. Only when he observes Earth, he will be seeing everything happening in slow motion. People on Earth, on the other hand, will see the astronaut moving in slow motion through his ship. It is important to note that this is not an optical illusion. It is a real, measurable effect which is called time dilation. You might ask, if astronaut and Earthlings see each other's clocks running slowly, then who's right? Say two twins, one traveling on the spaceship, the other one staying on Earth, meet up again after 10 years. Who's younger? This question is called the twin paradox, and its explanation is a story for another time. The answer is, the twin in the spaceship will be younger. With current tech, this effect is only measurable at very high speeds. Still, we can measure it. When muons are sped up in a particle accelerator, they decay more slowly. This is because the time of an accelerated muon runs slower when measured by a resting scientist. Einstein couldn't test any of this. All he did were thought experiments. As he famously said, mein Labor ist mein Papier. My laboratory is my paper. Imagine a light clock that has two photons oscillating between mirrors, one vertically, one horizontally. To a resting observer, the photons will always meet back in the center at the same time. When observing this clock from a fast-moving ship, it would get out of sync. Why? The vertical photon moves in a zigzag pattern, much like the light beam between Earth and Moon. The horizontal photon, which from our perspective is also moving at light speed, has an even longer distance to travel. Hence, for us the two photons would not meet back in the center at the same moment. This cannot be correct, because the photons meeting in the center is one event. This problem can be solved by shrinking the light clock in the direction of the rocket's movement. This is what Einstein called length contraction. He concluded, moving bodies shrink. Imagine a comet impacting on a planet and a spaceship passing by with high speed. Because of time dilation, a passing astronaut sees the event unfold in slow motion. The devastation caused, however, needs to be the same. In order to produce the same impact at slower speeds, the comet needs to be heavier when weighed from the reference frame of the astronaut. Therefore, Einstein's third insight was, moving bodies are heavier. Once again, this effect can be measured using a particle accelerator. When scientists collide particles at 99.9% .9 of light speed, they have around 40,000 times their normal mass. This phenomenon is called relative mass gain. Finally, imagine a spaceship taking off and accelerating. Newton taught us that this process transforms the energy of the fuel 
into velocity of the spaceship. However, he was missing something. Because moving bodies are heavier, the spaceship also needs to increase in mass when accelerating. Therefore, a small amount of energy is also transformed into mass. If energy could be transformed into mass, then mass could also be transformed into energy. With this, Einstein made a fundamental discovery about nature. Mass and energy are equivalent. He calculated that for everything else that was known to hold, this equivalence must be E equals mc squared. In other words, the amount of energy an object holds is equal to its mass times the light speed squared. If this formula was correct, it would mean that mass holds an enormous amount of energy. This would later be proven when the first atoms were split in laboratories. When a big atom is split, the total weight of the parts is smaller than the mass of the atom before it was split. The missing mass is directly transformed into energy in the proportion of E equals mc squared. Einstein figured out time dilation, length contraction, relative mass gain and mass energy equivalence within the course of a few years. These four effects are what is now known as special relativity. For everyday speeds, special relativity is not relevant two cars that pass each other with a speed of 100 km per hour in opposite directions will have a relative speed of 200 km per hour. They won't change mass, they won't be shorter and their clocks will run at the same speeds. Newton gets the job done. But as the cars move faster, their relative speed will diverge from the sum of their respective speeds. And accordingly, as they observe each other, they see each other's clocks running slower, each other's mass increasing and each other's lengths contracting. This was a huge leap for the scientific community, but only the first step for Einstein, who would move on to predict much more, which is now called general relativity. But that's a story for next time.